What reflective activities and prompts are appropriate to specific experiential education opportunities? Reflection allows participants to connect their observations and feelings about an experience in order to learn more about themselves, their community, another culture or group of people, a greater issue or specific classroom theory. There are a variety of reflection activities that can be used to help students reflect upon their learning experiences. In addition, there are a number of ways that employers, faculty, and community partners can help to prepare learners for reflection through goal setting, making time, and using the appropriate method. Whether it is reflection that takes place outside or inside the classroom, involves individual or group activities, or takes on a variety of formats such as journal or research paper, a mixture of approaches can address a range of learning and communication styles. Because that doesn't often come naturally and you, it doesn't come on the fly. You have to have those times, like around meal times, um, around the campfire, around travel times perhaps, um, around quiet down times where people can have that time to let things sink in and think about how things relate to, to uh, other aspects of their own experience and what they've learned in similar courses and other courses um, in their year, university career, and then how that fits into themselves as a person, as a professional, whatever it is that they're gonna be. Um, one of the critical reflective things that we often do as well, as I mentioned, keeping journals, um, that's very helpful for kind of those day-to-day -day events. And then at the end of the course, we all, we'll often ask students to write a reflective paper that isn't due for maybe a month um, after the actual course is done, because that allows them time to stew and to think about things and to like, ruminate and to let some of those aha moments emerge. Like the light bulb will go off sometimes a week or two after the course is done um, in terms of their thinking back about what they experienced and maybe revisiting some readings or thinking about what they talked about in a education class or psychology course and they see how those things fit. Um, one of the neat things that we do, and I know people do this in a lot of different courses, is we'll sometimes ask students to write a letter to themselves the last day of the course. And I'll take it, and then um, I don't read it. It's They'll put it in a self-addressed envelope, and I'll hold on to it, put it on my shelf, and then when I find it, often the next semester or several months later, I'll put it in the mail, and then students will get um, you know, some sense of where they, or where they were at that point and what they were thinking. Sometimes I'll provide them some things to think about in terms of what they should write in that letter, like what, mm -hmm. what are they feeling? Uh, what would they want to take away? If they could tell themselves six months from now, what are the important points? List those things. Uh, so give them, again, some direction um, around how to think about what they want to share with themselves because oftentimes we ask people to reflect and they're not really sure how to do that. So providing adequate time and providing structure for critical reflection I think is really important uh, in courses like this. I didn't require that students reflect only on a prescribed set of questions. Students could reflect on the most significant learning that they have done. And uh, that for me was, was scary to do because I have a curriculum. I have things that I feel are most valuable for students to learn. I had to let go of that in some ways. Not entirely, because I'm involved in the course all the way through coaching and uh, lecturing and of course offering feedback on assignments and encouraging students to make the connections between the formal learning and academic concepts and what they experience. Um, but it was surprising and important for me as an instructor to realize that my agenda is, in, is not exactly aligned with students learning agendas and what they need to learn might be exactly what they are expressing as their, as their learning in the reflections. So I think the service learning experience as an instructor helped me to understand that I have to meet students' learning needs where they are. I have to see students as learners and go with where they are at and build on their, both their prior knowledge and the moments that they come back and say were 
significant moments of learning for them. There were also assignments and projects that we worked on along the way that were specific to our actual project. So I would write reflection papers and my actual undergraduate thesis uh, report was a culmina culminative, cumulative final product of all of the things that I had learned. So you take the experience that you learn from working in the field and doing your project in the field, but then all of the reflective papers and assignments that you do along the way really put them on paper and, and show that this is the work that I've been doing and this is, the, this is what we did and this is what we can do going forward. So it was those assignments and that key thesis paper at the end of, of the term that kind of showed all of the work that had been done along the way and really put the skills that you learn in class into action and show that the action did, did lead to a final product. There's a slide deck that is a status report where I'm asking, um, what have you done what, about the decisions you've already made? You know, are you happy with your performance? What has led to your performance as it is? What can you reflect on what you've done? A, a present element, what are you thinking of doing right now in the short term for your next decision? How is what you've learned going to lead to that? Um, and then a future looking element, which is, okay, we've got four more decisions ahead of us. What is our general guiding strategy going forward? What have we learned from the first two that we can apply to the other four. Um, so that's that's one great element. The second is a presentation at the end of the simulation where each team will be asked to reflect on as a team what worked, what didn't work, what strategies did we use that we were happy with that maybe we would change next time, how did we bring in concepts and theories from the course into our decision making or perhaps we didn't. And this will all not only allow the students to reflect on their experience but also give me information for the next time to see okay was this a valuable experience, should I repeat this? And the final great element is an individual uh, reflection paper that is due a few days after the simulation is ended um, to talk about, okay, this is what I learned from the experience, not only narrowly looking at the simulation itself, but working with the group, making group uh, decisions, you know, trying to tie in some of those concepts and theories from class. What do I now think about this experience afterwards? Um, and what I'm looking for there, again, not tied to performance, what I'm looking for is critical thought um, and analysis of your own decisions and your own behavior throughout the simulation.